wrong with you? I love math. Alright, so let's graph this function, an exponential function. Label at least three points with exact values. So let's go ahead and make our table of values. Now, we did this a couple of days ago where we kind of just evaluated. We got the X's and Y's, and you can just graph your order pairs, but we're kind of putting that together. Okay, talk to your partner in five seconds. What do you think is the most important order pair for exponential functions? On the count of three, shout out something. Ready? One, two, three. Zero. Zero. I also heard the Y-intercept, which means what's the order pair for Y-intercept? Zero comma something, so. And I want to highlight this one. Okay. I'll show you by hand, and then you can just check with your calculator, right? Class, if I put in two there, does that mean six times two? What does it mean six squared is? Six. You put in a one there, what do you get? You put in a zero, six to the zero power is? One. Okay, getting a little tricky now. If I put in negative one there, what do you get? Remember, the all of that goes downstairs, that becomes one six. We can get a decimal later. Six to the negative two is going to be one over what? Thirty-six. And the same thing we've been doing all year long, you're trying to not just put into the calculator, right? The calculator's not taking the class and the test, you are. Okay, so let's kind of sketch our function. And notice the x values that I kind of picked. So I can kind of predict, uh, I'll go down here. Class, do you think the exponential function will go in uh, below the x-axis? No. Yeah, it's always going to be positive. You guys remember the 12 basic functions, the parent graphs? You guys remember that? Just say yes, Mr. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I want to get these decimals in, so I'm just going to put this into my calculator. So I have 6, and then remember to get the exponent, you have to press the carry button. Put x there, and then I'm going to go to my table of values. So I want to check my table set. Okay, so now we go back to the second table, and there I have some values. Now I actually have it on auto, so you could just put in negative 2, and that's what 1 over 36 is. So let's write that number. Negative 1. And while you're at it, you can just double check your answers. So 0, 1, and 2. Okay? So I got those values, so let's go ahead and graph it. Now if you look ahead, <coughs> put your largest, uh, put your finger on the largest y value. So I'm going to have to put a scale that will fit all of those numbers. So you can do something like by tens. And your scale has to be consistent, right? So every box is 5, 10, 15, 20. And then I'm going to mark these as 1s. Let's go ahead and graph these points. Negative 2. Now, when I think of decimals, if I had to teach you about decimals, I just want you to think about money. <coughs> How much money is this? Okay, some of you guys don't go into finance. It's like three cents, right? Three percent, three cents. Three cents is near what? Zero dollars or one dollar? So it's very close <coughs> down here, right? So something like this. Um, how about this? How much is that? Is that close to five dollars or zero dollars? 
It's a little bit more than what we had previously. How much is that one? A dollar, so zero one. One six, so now I'm a little bit above five dollars. And then two thirty six. That's thirty five and then thirty six. Everyone say smooth curve. And I want to highlight one more thing, because this will be tomorrow's lesson. Class, what number goes there? If I had to put my, my, my where my finger is, what number do you think is right there? You're just going to add one? Can I add $1 million to my bank account? What is there? Zero. Plus zero. Okay, this sounds kind of weird, right? This is the horizontal asymptote. You're going to see in transformations that your graph is going to basically move, and this kind of gives us a good idea where the graph will be. Okay? Hello, man.